Hey everybody and welcome to Bits of Board, where we're talking board games, miniatures, cards and dice. My name's Michael and today I'm coming at you from one of the parks near my work because it's so much easier to get stuff done on your lunch break. Now this video here is all about a game called Everdell and we're specifically going to be learning how to play. Now I'll come back, hit you up at the end with a couple of extra, you know, bits and pieces because Everdell, it's kind of a unique game. You'll see what I mean as we go through but yeah we'll come back and talk about it after. This is also in a little bit of celebration. There's actually a brand new Kickstarter coming up for Everdell's next two expansions but they're also going to be selling off the big box version of the game as well complete with everything which is just wild. So if you're keen on learning a little bit more about the base game or if you need a rules refresher before your next play this is the video for you. Let's get in. Everdell is a worker placement, resource management, tableau building kind of game. It has players that take on the role of leaders amongst the different critters inhabiting the wonderful lands of Everdell, each making their own effort to settle the lands. Over the course of the game, players will take turns taking actions in an effort to build a pool of victory points. And once all players are out of moves, the game is over. Setup is a breeze. Place the board at the center of the table with the ever tree on top. Place resources in their spots along the river. We have twigs, resin, pebbles, and berries, which players will use to fulfill the effects of cards they play. Also make sure to place the point tokens and occupied tokens in reach nearby. Next, we shuffle the forest cards and place them randomly on clearings as per the player count. Three for two players and all four for the rest. Any remaining are returned to the game box. We place our four basic event tiles along the river and four randomly chosen special events on the low branches of the ever tree. These almost exclusively award victory points and exactly like the forest cards, any remaining are returned to the game box. Next, we shuffle the main deck, placing them at the base of the tree, and then draw eight to be placed in the meadow across from the tree. These are a shared pool of cards players can use when playing cards on their turn. Finally, players each take five cards from the top of the main deck and the workers in their color, two kept in their play area, with the remaining workers atop the tree for collection as the game progresses through the seasons. Finally, and probably my favourite rule, the most humble player goes first. And good luck trying to prove that one. <laughs> Play will begin with the first player proceeding clockwise. On their turn, players will perform just one action, either placing their worker, playing a card, or preparing for season. Over the course of the game, play will move throughout the different seasons, beginning after winter in spring, moving through summer and autumn. The interesting thing to note here is that not all players will progress through the seasons at the same period, and play just continues turn after turn. When a player can take no more actions, or they don't wish to, they have essentially finished their game, and play will continue without them until all players have chosen to finish. If a player ends the game and another player's action would usually involve that player, for example, passing cards or passing resources, these would not be gained and instead discarded or returned to the supply instead. Once all players have finished, the game is over and players tally their points and the highest point total wins. Now let's talk about the actions in a little more detail. We'll begin with worker placement. If a player decides to place one of their available workers, those in their supply, they will place them on a chosen location somewhere in Everdell. This could be a basic or forest action, awarding resources or cards, a basic or special event, which are one-shot placement locations, awarding victory points to the first player who achieves them, destinations on cards, awarding you just about anything, the Haven space, allowing players to discard cards for every two, awarding one resource of choice. Or if placing in Autumn, one of the Journey spaces awarding victory points at endgame. 
Now, for each of the different placement locations, there are two types of space a player can place their worker. If the placement location is an enclosed circle, it is known as an exclusive space and can only hold one worker at a time. On the other hand, if the placement location is open, it is a shared space and can house any number of workers at any time. Once a worker is placed, the player will take the associated action immediately, leaving the worker deployed to that location until brought back with a prepare for season action, something we'll look at shortly. Before we do that though, let's take a look at playing cards. To play a card, a player must meet the requirements of the card, as listed in the top left hand corner. These requirements could be listed as resources to be returned to the supply, or constructions which must be present in that player's city. Should a player pay for their card using a construction already built, they should take an occupied token, placing it over the symbol in the card's lower right corner to ensure it cannot be used again. Cards may be played from either a player's hand or from any card currently sitting in the meadow. Should a card ever be played from the meadow, it is replaced immediately by one from the main deck. Players may have up to 15 cards in their city and may have any number of the same card so long as it's not unique. When drawn, cards are taken from the main deck unless otherwise specified and a player can only have a maximum of eight cards in hand. Now it's not the case where a player may draw further than eight and then discard down, it is simply stop drawing once you reach eight. Should a player ever be given cards from another player and their hand is at eight, the cards would instead be discarded. Lastly, and pretty standard with card games, if the draw deck is ever exhausted, shuffle the discard and go again. Now, before we move on to the prepare for season action, I wanna go over the five different types of cards. Now, there are many cards in each different type, but there are five major categories. Traveler cards, which are activated only once immediately when played, production cards which activate once when played, and then once more during both spring and autumn's prepare for season action. Destination cards which act as new worker placement locations activate when a player places their worker on it, with open locations able to be visited by opponents as well. Governance cards which grant bonuses when specific kinds of cards are played, and prosperity cards, which are worth points at the end of the game. The final action is the prepare for season action, and is only available once a player has deployed all available workers. When a player takes this action, they gather their deployed workers and return them to their supply for use over the next season. In addition, a player must also resolve the current season's effects. In spring, they take one additional worker from the Evertree, and activate all production cards in their city. In summer, they take another additional worker and may draw up to two cards from the meadow into their hand. Finally, in autumn, they gain their final two workers and activate all production cards in their city one final time. Worth noting here, production cards placed after this point still award their effects on placement. And that's it. Once all players are finished with their turns, they tally up their points, and the player with the most is the winner, with the tiebreaker going to the player resolving the most events, and if there's still a tie, it's most resources. Now what we have there is a very solid worker placement resource management kind of game. Place workers, get things, so you can play other things to gain victory points. To me, it is very important that that is not the lasting impression of this game because that alone should not be enough to sway someone into a game like this when there are dozens and dozens of other medium weight Euro style games to sink your teeth into. See, what Everdell does best is it takes familiar Euro game style gameplay and it combines it with meaningful interesting gameplay that has players actively searching out combos to help them play their best game. Everdell does something wonderful for the new players around and it basically serves up some of the more basic combos to you on a silver platter. 
Take the wood carver and storehouse combo. You get your own personal work placement location that rewards whatever you might need most on the season. Combine it with the wood carver, you get a construction which can pump out victory points. The architect here grants one victory point at game's end for each unused resin and stone up to a maximum of six. The crane, which will bring him in for free, allows a player to discard it to pay three less resources during construction. That could be three stone or resin, helping keep those valuable victory point resources in your storage. The inn is an open location that allows any player to play critters or constructions from the meadow for three fewer resources, with the innkeeper further decreasing the berry cost if you choose to discard him. The farm produces berries and can attract either the husband or wife, who can both actually share the same location in a player's city. If the player has a husband, it's paired with a wife and they have a farm in the city during harvests he awards additional resources, and if the wife is paired with the husband, she's worth more victory points. There are just so many card options scattered throughout the main deck, each of them providing their own powers for the player to use as they see fit. And these in combination with the different placement locations around Everdell, players have just insane amount of options available to them each game. It's also really super pretty. All right, so that is how you play Everdell. Scratching the surface, we have a stock standard Euro framework, or at least that's what I felt when I first read the rules. In fact, that's why I felt I had to flesh it out a bit, adding those few card examples. See, Everdell is a soup, if I may. This soup looks nice, especially that collector's edition. It has wonderful color, refreshing ingredients, and it has a massive table presence but it's just a soup. And most soups just aren't all that exciting. Now, that's not to say a soup doesn't have a place at the table. Sometimes soup is an entree, but there you're just whetting your appetite for the main course. Other times it's a staple for family dinner, but you're really more there to catch up and spend time with the people you love. Soup is reliable, sometimes filling, but ultimately you're hungering for something else. But what if the soup was hiding something? Hidden, tasty complexities that only reveal themselves after your first bite, after your 10th bite, after you drain the bowl? Well, that elusive soup is Everdell. So many complex flavors that can be chained together to make the perfect slurp. <laughs> so many interesting combos to try out, and with the variable game setup, there's just so much going on for replayability. I mean, so much going on for seconds? Either way though, we have all these things waiting beneath the surface for players to discover. Now, this is just the base game. Obviously, Everdell has currently three expansions doing the rounds. Pearlbrook, Spirecrest, and Belfair, adding new uh, locations, some cards, and some strategic critters for placement. But it also has another two on the way with their next Kickstarter, Mistwood and New Leaf. Throwing in that big box collection and styling games have really made this one for the ages. Now, I don't really want to get into review territory here. This is honestly just a how to play. But I did want to say that this game is more than meets the eye. Yes, it looks pretty, and honestly, that's what won me over, but you honestly don't know what you've got until you finish the first game. So get out there, find someone with the game, and have a play. I promise you'll be surprised. <laughs> All right, that's enough from me for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and this unconventional location. <laughs> If you have, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and do all the things that you guys can do to help this channel grow. But besides that, we are done. So as always, my name's Michael. This is Bits of Board, kinda. We'll catch you next time.